Hello, Serge Falken here, also known as Bigfoot from Lausanne, Switzerland, welcoming you to my little leather shop shelf. And uh, let's get ready for the next episode of dyeing and coloring leather. All right, so far we talked about the different kinds of leather. We talked about the different kinds of colors. We talked about the ability to mix them and to thin them down to get different shades and hues and different colors. But we haven't talked about our tools. And your tool is what is gonna make the difference between a quality job and just some um, smudge, smudge, smudge. So here are my brushes. Uh, to the left, uh, it's your right, my left, right, uh, right uh, okay never mind here are the cheap brushes I mean the cheapo crapo some of them I even one or two of them I even picked them off the side of the road so uh, they're not really there for fancy work if I got some kids or so fine but those here that's the quality brushes that's the ones that I invested in some of them are even quite pricey I mean I, I got some brushes I paid almost $40 for them but you preach all the time as an artisan you should buy quality so do that with your brushes too and if you take well care of them some of them uh, that i have here i've had them for almost a decade and they still look almost like brand new why because i take well care of them and that's what we're going to discuss today so let's look at those tools what we got here are in my eyes paint brooms and certainly not paint brushes destined to do some delicate work no way you could handle a tight corner with those. Cheap brushes are mainly synthetic brushes or so-called camel hair, which is actually a generic term for cheaper and lower quality natural hair, nothing to do with camels. Some have the idea that it takes a very fine brush to be able to reach into aforementioned tight corners. Not so. You'd be reloading your brush every half a second. What we want is a brush that can take a nice load of color and also keep a nice sharp tip that can reach into these small gaps and corners with ease and still carry enough dye stuff not to cut you in the middle of it. For leather dye, you're best served with natural hair brushes like uh, Red Sable or Squirrel. Personally, I go for Kolinsky Sable being the top of the list because they are soft but also springy. I got here a little project with some carvings and I want to paint the little spaces in between my not work in black. Here's what I need. Paper towel or a rag, a small receptacle for the dye stuff, my brush and of course some leather dye. While I'm at it, here's a little tip. Those small dye bottles tip easy. You don't want to have a catastrophe like this one happening to you, do you? The solution is quite simple. Take an old mug or a jar and the problem is solved. No more tipping of dye bottles all over your workplace. My preferred method is to take out what I need and close the lid. That's it. Capillary action or capillarity is the ability of liquid to flow against gravity in narrow spaces without the help of external forces. It was Leonardo da Vinci that recorded this observation for the first time. This little demonstration shows how the ink will climb up along the brush hair so no need to swill your brush around in a bucket, just dip the tip. So we load our brush and remember, just dip the tip, that's good enough. Squeeze out the excess dye on the edge of your cup and check on the towel to see if the brush isn't loaded too heavily. The sharp end of the brush allows you to get into the corners and we can go on for quite a while without having to reload the brush. Most important, always pull your brush, never push, or the hair will spread out and ruin your tip. With a bit of practice, you'll be able to attack your corners from different angles depending on how you hold your brush, without having to spin your work piece constantly. It may save you some time too. Okay, let's speed up things a little bit. Oops, we did a little smudge here, due to a second of inattention. This is why you should make sure that your workplace is quiet and you cut out all distractions so you can focus on your work. Suppose your brush is too heavily loaded, what would happen then? You remember that capillarity I mentioned previously? 
Well, this also works for the leather. Too much dye in the brush gets sucked up by the leather and it'll spill over into places it wasn't intended to. But no worry, in a future video I'll show you how to save such a mess. Now, suppose we're done with our work, what next? Well, time to clean up. I never can stress enough the need of cleanliness when playing with colors and dyes. To keep our fingers clean, let's use some rubber gloves. First, we pour our remains of dye back into the bottle and put it away. Wipe out your receptacle with the paper towel and give it a final clean with a little shot of alcohol. Good, dishes are done, now let's clean our brush. We want to do this with as little solvent, dye reducer or alcohol as possible. For starters, we squeeze out as much dye as we can. Once our brush squeezed almost dry, we dip it in the solvent and squeeze again. Never pull on the hair, you wouldn't like to have your hair pulled either, wouldn't you? Your dye stuff should go out of the brush the same way it got in. Once the brush is fairly clean, you soak it with solvent and swab the brush on the towel a few times as if you'd be painting. Now there still will be some remnants of dye stuff around and under the ferrule. To get most of it out, I roll the brush along the ferrule. Don't press like a madman, a little pressure will do. Look at how little solvent I used and my alcohol is still fairly clean. I keep repeating the brush cleansing until my towel takes no more dye stuff. Now it's time to put our brush away. But we want to be sure that it will keep its perfect shape. To do a nice job with your brushes, you have to take care of them as if they would be your own hair. If your brush looks like this, chances are you're not going to do a good job. Your paintbrush should look like this. Therefore I use saddle soap since I have it at hand, but any bar of soap will do. Once soaped up, we can shape the tip and our brush is all happy. Warning! Warning! Don't you ever try to shape your brush the old school way. Some pigments can be toxic. What we just saw was about using paint brushes with leather dye, be it alcohol dye, or the ordinary dye, or pro dye, or whatever, alcohol-based dye. It's very fluid dye, so it behaves like ink, hence the recommendation of quality brushes made with natural hair. Even if you postpone your brush cleaning ritual, there will be little harm down to the brush. The dye will dissolve in alcohol even after it dried for a few weeks and you get to clean your brushes later. But just keep up the good habit and do this closing ritual once you're done with your job. Clean your brushes, store them away in a safe place. Now with acrylics, it's a totally different ball game, as I will show you right now. For acrylics, it's recommended to use synthetic brushes. For one, they can take quite some beating. The thing with acrylic resin is that it dries fairly fast and the brush left unattended will be damaged for good, especially with natural hair. Should you leave your brush full of acrylic paint on your table while being cold away for some time, it will dry and harden and it is bye-bye brush, good for the trash or some kindling. Our solvent is simply water, since there's plenty of it, no need to be stingy as with the solvents like shown previously. Suppose we do our painting, well, let's be somewhat artistic, okay, like, um, there, I am. there. What you don't want to do is to lay down your brush, instead you put it in your jar of water immediately. As long as it sits there, it won't dry up and harden. Now, this is another reason why I would recommend synthetic brushes, because a natural hairbrush will be ruined sitting on its hair in a jar for hours. The cleaning of a brush is a lot more simple. Swill and shake your brush in water and squeeze it out a few times. Done. The shaping of the brush is just done as we showed it before. A little bit of soap, shape it, and voila! 
Hey, you forgot one more brush since you're bragging about your brush expertise. What about these? Hmm? I know I just saw some last week. They were all dirty and full of dye, Mr. Cleanliness. Yes, indeed. Uh, there is one more brush used in leather dyeing that I would like to show you. But it's not the toothbrush. Let that still be the big mystery. It's about this one. Well, yeah, it's, it's a brush, isn't it? In uh, the tanneries, actually, it's used to do some uh, big surface dyeing, hand brushed dyed leather. Uh, and it can come in very handy in our little artisan shop because uh, if we need to do a large piece in a uniform color, being efficient at it, I mean, imagine to do that with your little dauber, forget it. And we want to have it a regular application, so the whole piece has to be wet in one go. And here is how it works. Protect your table with a board or some plastic. Lay your big piece of leather on it. Take a dish, a Tupperware or whatever. I stole this bowl out of my mama's kitchen. and She'll love me for that. Pour plenty of dye into the bowl, dip your brush in, and as we already discussed, capillarity, you can see the brush pumping up plenty of dye. The procedure is quite simple. Spread the dye in rapid circular motions across the whole piece. Work fast so that none of the dye has time to dry up before you're done. You may want to use a second coat once the piece is totally dried up, say after an hour or so. The cleaning of the brush is even simpler than with the acrylics. Basically, you just don't clean it. Just soak up the excess dye, put your brush in the plastic, clean your dish, and as the Brits would say, Bob is your uncle. Well, I hope you got some useful information out of this video clip and there will be more videos to come. If you don't want to miss them, please subscribe to the playlist. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't, oh, come on, give me a thumbs up, all right? Well, I hope to appear again on your screen in the future. Meanwhile, thanks for watching the whole video clip all the way to the end, and bye-bye. See you next time. Hmm. Genie in a bottle. Very funny. Lol. Not. Now, let me out of here. Uh, I'll promise I will not stick my nose in your toothbrush. Mystery. Well, at least not while you're around. Thank you